Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my book review of the book Star Trek Picard Firewall by David Mack. This is the fifth Star Trek Picard novel. They've been doing kind of standalone novels that tell backstories of some of the various characters. We got the first book uh, talking about Picard's backstory, the second book talking about some backstory of um, uh, the Rikers. We got the third book, which was talking about Cristobal Rios, and the fourth book, which was talking about Raffi and Elnor. And in this book, we get the backstory of um, Seven of Nine after the events of Voyager TV show, but before the events of um, Star Trek Picard season one. And so uh, this, uh, a couple of notes about this book. First, this is David Mack's uh, first hardcover that he's done. He's done a lot of paperbacks for Star Trek over the years. He's probably done it, 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 a minimum 20, probably closer to 30 at this point. But this is his first hardcover. So it's a big deal for him, which is pretty cool. And uh, this book... Uh, says it is based off of the Picard series as well as Voyager, but it also has a few ties to the Star Trek Prodigy TV show, which is the animated series that they have that focuses uh, that, that focuses on a bunch of kids that also has Janeway involved. And um, uh, the, all this book, the, 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 the connections to Prodigy are very small, very small, very, very minuscule. This is really a Picard slash Voyager connected book book. Um, this book takes place about a year after the events of uh, the Voyager returning from the Delta Quadrant. And you see uh, Seven of Nine basically being dissatisfied. First, first the, the, the Federation won't let her in, which is totally just terrible that the Federation won't let her in as a citizen. And so she goes outside the Federation taking odd jobs. And eventually she gets contacted by someone who wants her to join the Fenris Rangers, which is this kind of vigilante justice group out on the fringes of the Republic, or not the Republic, the, um, of the Federation, which is helping to, uh, uh, to manage everything and to help people out and to bring people resources and stop bad guys and all this stuff. And it, they are, is for, for in many ways, vigilantes, but they're an organized group that's trying to, to do good. And so uh, Seven ends up, really, she's contacted by someone in the Federation telling her if she uh, spies on the Fenris Rangers for the, um, uh, uh, for the Federation, they'll actually give her citizenship. And the whole book is about Seven uncovering things, not only about the Fenris Rangers, but about the various enemies um, uh, of the Fenris Rangers and information about the, uh, the Federation as well. I really liked the political intrigue. When you have the elements of the Federation doing propaganda against the Fenris Rangers, I thought that was fascinating. The Fenris Rangers having to fight against warlords. You would particularly follow this guy named Warlord Kogish. I think it's how you pronounce it. Uh, K-O-H-G-I-S-H. Kogish. He was really fascinating. You also see some kind of political stuff with the Romulans and some uh, other political things going on. You see how the first book in this series, The Last Best Hope, shows the whole process of helping the Romulans out when it looks like their star is going to explode. And basically, when the Federation shifts its resources to help the Romulans, they abandon all these other places. And you get to see what that kind of looks like in this book, um, which was just really fascinating. There are some things in this book I just didn't care for. For instance, a lot of the seven relationship stuff I just didn't care for. For one, because I felt the move, the, the TV show Voyager es establishes who she's kind of. There, there are a couple people that she should be, a couple of guys that she should be set up with. And um, uh, the show ended up not going in any of those directions. And I feel like. Um, uh, despite the fact that she should have ended up with one of those guys, at least Kirsten Byers' books, which were part of the post-nemesis continuity that they did for a while, at least Seven of Nine had what I would say is an adequate re relationship with, with a guy in one of those. And I just don't care for her relationships here or in the Picard series. I feel like they just said, we want to take it in a totally different direction. We want to take Seven and make her represent things that she just never did in Voyager. And I, I can see the logic behind why they would take the story of Seven of Nine and her personal relationships in this way. I can understand that logic entirely. However, 
I just don't like it because it just doesn't fit with what I think they were setting up in the original Voyager show. And so it just doesn't feel loyal to that. It feels more loyal to seasons one and two of Picard, um, which, of course, this is supposed to be a tie into Picard. So I get it. I, I get why they did it. I just I just didn't like it. Um, a few other notes I have on the book. I really liked Janeway in this book. Janeway was a terrific anchor for the story. Janeway is now a vice admiral in the Federation in Starfleet, and she is ba- based, uh, you know, on Earth with the Federation. And so she's getting information either from Seven of Nine or about Seven of Nine, and she is, um, uh, and she is kind of like uh, uh, sh- showing us what's happening in the Federation. You're getting to see what's happening with Chakotay and all these others. So I really liked reading about Janeway's perspective. And uh, uh, I-, I heard another author, uh, if-, if you read Star Trek books, Christy Golden has used this example before for how she uses things. But I would describe Janeway as meanwhile back at the ranch type storytelling where you're just following Janeway um, uh, uh uh, as she's as she's seeing everything happen, um, and also there is one thing in this book that I think was terrifically done, and it just didn't go far enough with it, and that was the relationship of of, of Seven of Nine with Janeway in terms of being a parent and a child. There is one line of dialogue in this book that describes I, I don't remember if it was from Janeway's perspective or if it was just. the the omniscient narrator of the book, but it describes Seven of Nine to Janeway as being the prodigal son, or rather, or in this case, the prodigal daughter, that uh, referencing the story in the Bible of the prodigal son who leaves his father uh, uh, when he gets angry that he doesn't get what he wants, and uh, uh, he goes and basically has a terrible life, comes back, and his father welcomes him back in open arms. And Janeway throughout the book is always willing to help Seven of Nine and is always trying to help Seven of Nine. And Seven kind of appreciates it, but at the same time is like, no, I'm going to go do my own thing. It's like, if you just listen to Janeway, you'll get there eventually. You'll get what you always wanted, which was to work with Starfleet. And Jane, and because it won't happen now, Seven is just determined to um, uh, not, not accept things. And I was just really frustrated because I identify more with Janeway in this situation as the one who's like, no, this is the path for you. This is the way you should go. And Seven's not even following it at all. Um, and I wish, I wish that that had gone further. Um, but the, 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 the one time I read that line where it describes Seven as the prodigal son, I was like, that is a genius, genius writing, David Mack. Speaking of which, um, I uh, actually uh, am doing an interview with David Mack on the Literary Treks podcast. If you listen to Literary Treks, which is hosted by Matthew Rushing and also Casey Pettit, and then I am have joined the podcast now. I'm the third co-host, and um, uh, we have read this book for the podcast, and we'll be interviewing David Mack soon. I don't know as of recording this whether the podcast will come out or this video, but be on the lookout for that podcast because we'll be reviewing the book and interviewing David Mack, which I'm really excited to do. I've never met him or talked with him. So those are my uh, uh, thoughts on the book Firewall by David Mack. I enjoyed the book, but uh, there were several elements I did not, I did not love about it. I'm going to give it like a 7 out of 10. It was entertaining. Not David Mack's strongest, not the strongest in the Picard series, but it was an entertaining book. But I really disagreed with a lot of the decisions made in the book. So if you've read Firewall or by David Mack, Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.